So I got, you know, I got a serious question, kind of going back to that, the whole retirement thing, because we, we were talking about this and it's kind of the reason why kind of led to us kind of trying to get you on and invite you to, to do this. And we appreciate it. Um, as you well know, as aviators, especially as pilots who are at the top of the food chain of the military, just ask us and we'll tell you <laughs> that that's the truth and the fact. Ask anybody, right. as long as it's us. And so, yeah. <laughs> the, w- and me personally right now, I'm kind of the oldest of the bunch, I think. I, I retired and got out. And I remember leaving the, the base in the flight suit. We talked about this before on one of the other shows. And like that feeling of, this is the last time I'm going to kind of lace up. You know, right. can you speak to like how that, how, you know, you kind of dealt with that, if you dealt with it, or were you like ready to go? Because I thought I was ready to go. And I'm like, fuck, I'm out of here. And then I'm like, yeah, oh, that kind of hurt. <laughs> Um, you know, my whole NFL story is pretty wild in the sense that, um, just going way back, I, I was, you know, I was a college walk on, I, um, awesome. was undrafted. It was never, it was, you know, growing up, I was never an all-star on any level. Um, it, you know, it's never like, oh man, that guy's going to make it to the league or whatever. Dude, you're six uh, six two seventy five. How is that? <laughs> right, <laughs> not always. That, <laughs> that shit happened late, man. I was a real late bloomer. Like all through oh, high man. school, I was uh, short as hell, and uh, just a hard worker and kind of grinded. Awesome. And um, just towards the end, I just shot up and had a few opportunities to play. I was getting like D two offers and one double A and stuff. But two of my buddies were going to Georgia Tech awesome. on scholarship. Uh, Hugh Riley. It was one of them, one of our good friends. I don't know if you met him down here. You? Yeah. Shut up. <laughs> so um, I kind of – I was looking to go up north and play, and at the last second something happened with school where they wanted someone else. So I decided to walk on at Georgia Tech and play there. I um, ended up earning a scholarship. And then the NFL thing was never on the map. Um, and then my senior year, we had a coach come in, Shane Gailey, who has some NFL connections. He – said man you got you know you got the frame whatever um so i just kind of went for it wow wasn't drafted came down here uh, made the bucks as an undrafted free agent played 10 years you know um and it was all i mean for me it was literally one day at a time like wow the story of you know like having to earn your job literally every single day was kind of my thing um so have that having been my story you know once you get towards the end and your body starts to break down a little bit and uh, you realize, you know, the young guys are coming in. It wasn't hard for me to kind of be like, All right, man, it's, oh, it's really? Been a good run. <laughs> it's been a good run. Yeah, you were because you weren't expecting it anyway. And the fact that yeah, it happened right. for ten years, man, that's exactly. But um, but you did put in the work. You worked your ass off to get the position. Right. Yeah. And I thought, you know, I thought that 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 would allow <laughs> for an easy transition. Um, yeah. Kind of oh, towards yeah. what you're saying, I thought that that would. It's been cool. It's been fun. I'm out. Let's go start reality. And um, but I realized early into my retirement that, you know, I had been a part of a team for a long time and been a part of something. Yeah. And it's probably similar to you guys. You know, like you have a. uh, It's just a sport, man. But um, squadron and team are the same thing. If you. Oh yeah. Definitely, man. It's definitely more than just the sport. Yeah. Right. When you're a part of something and, and you're showing up every day, you know that, that that's appreciated and needed by other people to make oh, the yeah. organism as a whole function, yeah. which you guys are right in the, yeah, I mean, that's what you do. You guys are a part of a, a freaking machine and your job's important and it's respected and it's needed. And it was kind of that deeper level that rocked me a little bit. You know what I'm yeah, saying? Yeah. Like, like, a month, two months, three months into it, where you, you kind of like, you try to handle the surface level psychological stuff, which, yep. you know, you're like, oh, I'm, I'm into, you try to pre-plan for it. And you're like, I'll be cool. I'll stay busy. Like I went back to school, finished my degree, coached a lot, like tried to stay rolling activity wise. But man, like, you know, you wake up and you're like, fuck, no one gives a fuck what I'm doing today. <laughs> you know what I'm saying? <laughs> You like, know what? I had that very morning. <laughs> this morning. I had that. Yeah. Like, I could go fucking, like, sit on a fucking tree log by the river and no one gives a <laughs> shit, you know? Whereas for so long, like, yeah. literally, our performance, and you're, I, I'm just a small part of a bigger, whatever you want to call it, team, but 
Yeah. Like literally our performance, pe- a lot of people's jobs depend on it. A lot of people's <laughs> livelihood depends on it. People care. People are like interested in what you're doing. Absolutely. So, so like that, you know, that deeper level was tough for me. It's like, well, fuck, I better find something. Like, what do I, you know, I got to find something to, to fucking do or like, yeah, that care purpose, about or whatever. We talked about that. Right. Yeah, find that, that exactly. purpose is. Exactly. Wow. So, um, yeah, man, that was tough. Um, you know, the other thing that you guys could probably relate to, you know, the NFL is not a typical job <laughs> by any means. No. <laughs> and it, like everything's just dialed up, man. Like if you looked at all the characteristics of any job and, you know, whatever, like the difficulty in keeping your job, uh, fucking 11, like yeah. the stress related to keeping your job, 11, the excitement of your job in the NFL, 11. 11. Yeah. I mean, you're yeah. like, the pressure playing in front of fucking millions of people and you got to do your job against really good motherfuckers. Yeah. 11, you know, 11. Wow. Um, physical like contact, like that release, that kind of fight you're, you're in like hand to hand combat four days a week, fucking around with big dudes, like 11, like all these <laughs> things are so dialed up. Wow. And then when it's over and then you guys know that, I mean like, f- yeah. I don't know, like flying in airspace where you could get like whatever it's all oh, yeah. it's pretty intense shit and then when it's over it's like you're done and you're in this fucking vacuum with like all those <laughs> knobs good. are now all those knobs are a fucking zero yeah you know and that's you're a great analogy like, so it's tough it, like that you know like when you're living with all that shit turned up it's it's like adrenaline it's like it, it literally has a chemical effect on you i would think like your brain and like sure. getting riled up and then when all that stuff gets vacuumed out of you, you know, there's like, you tend to diff like way, right? Like, oh, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> you're like, man, and I, where's the excitement in my life? Like, what is that? So it's that hard. To, it's hard to replace that too. It's hard to replace exactly. the exhilaration of, of, you know, being an aviator and, you know, going to combat, flying combat missions or whatever, right. just, just, the, just flying. Mm-hmm. It's hard to replace that kind of thing. And then couple that with the camaraderie you have with your team. Or the yep. people that you fly with, you know, I love these guys, Zach, and well, I don't like Zach, but um, ah, yeah, <laughs> stop, you know, <laughs> you know, I love redheads, stop it. Um, yeah, it's it's tough, you know, when you're with that team and you're out there getting shit done, you can you can walk away from the jet and you're proud of what you did, and yeah, I can I can only imagine, and then you're and we're only yeah. dialing probably around a seven, yeah, but you're definitely eleven. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I'm saying? Man. Our dial like, only goes but- to seven. Man. But like the, sh- the little shit, man, like you guys put in a bunch of work and then you go and you, whatever you do, you go home, you go out, you drink together, you, you yeah. connect, it creates a connection. Um, there's, there's an emotional connection with it. Absolutely. You know, like it's, it's not, it's not like a day job where you're sitting in an office right now. They like, you guys are going through some shit together. Yeah. But That's willing to bail each other out of jail the whole night. Yeah. <laughs> or, or in jail together in Italy. <laughs> right. <laughs> <Northern> Italy. <laughs> yeah, man. Chris I, I don't Rangan, know that story. <laughs> That's a story. I was just uh, I was just looking at something and it's like it says here that out of high school football players, only one percent of high school football players become division one college football players, and only one percent of division one college football players become NFL players. So you have like less than one percent of one percent chance of ever if you ever played right. football of ever touching an NFL wow. field. So. And you played and for what, ten years. <laughs> and what's wild about that man is like never ever at any point in my day-to-day life did those uh numbers come into play like Even never register. and and a lot of that was just by circumstance yeah. I, I don't know like it's my my life or my path through football was literally like i said just like one day at a time one day at a time because i had no other option i yeah. think you just enjoyed um, it and it was yeah. a path to you know like enjoyment of hanging with the guys you like the camaraderie and then i think it, you just once you get into the into the mix with that you just want to keep it going and then I think, I don't know, Will, can you speak to like, as far as you're ending up at Jaw Tech, you, you were actually pretty, cause you're a pretty smart guy. Like it, did the engineering factor of that school come into effect as far as like you actually wanted to get a degree that counted versus just any old degree? Uh, was that a factor at all? I don't know. You know, I was, sorry, I got a battery warning. Um, I, I, I wanted to go to a good school. And I was, the plan was to use football to go to an Ivy League school. Oh, okay. And I was, I mentioned earlier, I was on my way to Princeton and um, 
at the last yeah. second, like, like a week before signing day, they called and they're like, hey, man, because I was bottom of the totem pole recruit. Mm-hmm. But I was like in the door and um, they're like, hey, man, we, this kid just decommitted from like Harvard or some shit. They're like, sorry, like right. you're out. And so like from my list that I had left, if I wanted to play football and go to school, tech was the like, I, I seek uh, like challenge. I don't know that I was seeking engineering in particular, but sure. it was like, okay, you've got an opportunity to go to a really good school and you can, um, here, here's a challenge, like go fucking play with the big boys, that you is. know? And that was, that was my motivation. Like as soon as that was over, I'm like, fuck it. I'm going to go see what this is all about. And I wasn't extremely confident going in, but um, we came from a program, man, that was like, our foundation was just like hard motherfucking work. We were just tough little dudes who played a very uh, disciplined, we were in the wishbone. You yeah, know, it's like, yeah, you were, yeah. Yeah. Yeah, <laughs> you were playing against all the military academies most yeah. years, right? So Yeah, man. Um, so we, like me and those other two guys I mentioned, we came in that place and like, we kind of surprised ourselves because we were like busting our ass and getting recognized. Yeah. And at that point, we, you know, I think all three of us were like, all right, we're going to be fine here. And uh, it just worked out, you know, and uh, <laughs> it Andy, tech, I had a good time. Did you ever yeah, get scholarship? Was, uh, did you ever get scholarship while you were there? Yeah, I got, um, they gave me a scholarship after my freshman year. I ended awesome. up getting pulled up like half, halfway through, which again, at the time, man, I had no idea that was even a thing. <laughs> Wow. Like, we just don't fuck around, man. We just, like, we grind, we work, and, like, whatever else happens. You know, I think, that's and that's cool. a, there's a testament <laughs> there, man. That's a testament to, like, let the work lead you. Just do the right. work. Right. Do the work. These good things start happening for yep. you, right? If you prepare yourself. 100%. You, you know, all this stuff happens. And I think we can attest that being kind of kind of looking at the Brandon, plan. I got I got kind of a civil ma- civilian man's parallel to this. Like yeah. I tried to get an air force Academy my senior year in high school and I was going to go out there and play basketball. I had gone out the year before and the coach said, yeah, we'd like to have you out here. Yeah. It comes down to it. And they offer me a prep school slot. I thought it was an insult. I didn't know that that's essentially how they redshirted oh, yeah. people. Yeah, and you don't have any shirt. communication with the Academy. There's zero. So they just exactly. send you a letter and it says you've been accepted to the prep school. Yeah. And I literally told my dad, I was like, I'm not going to a fucking prep school. I'm ready to go to college. <clears throat> yeah. So I turned down the offer. I go to Southern Illinois University because I didn't apply to any other colleges because I'm a dumbass. Yeah. And so my dad got me in his alma mater. I go to Southern Illinois and I'm walking around campus one day and some guy says, do you want a free hamburger? Sure. So I walk in the back there. It's the ROTC unit. I never even heard of ROTC. Never even knew it existed. <laughs> I walk in the back there and there's all these people schmoozing these motherfuckers and this, that, and the other. And I'm like, what are you guys talking about? And I like, well, this is air force ROTC. You know, you, you don't have to commit until your junior year. And I was like, Oh cool. I just tried to get to the air force Academy last year. And they're like, Oh really? Well, what are you studying? And I was like, well, I'm studying mechanical engineering. And they say, they're like, Oh really? You need to meet the commandant. Five seconds later, I'm meeting the commandant. One day later, I'm in his office Five days later, I'm in classes. Jeez. And within a month, I have a full ride scholarship. Yeah. That's but how it happens. He waited till he saw my grades. When I came back and I had, I had like a 3.5 after my first semester with 21 credit hours. For some reason, I had this dumbest <laughs> counselor ever. She signed me up for 21. Because <laughs> I had to add what? the, I had to the hell? 17 credit hours. And then she added the four credit hours for OTC. Ugh. 21 credit hours my first semester and that comment Jesus. he goes dude if you can do 21 credit hours at a 3.5 he goes i'll support your ass every semester until you graduate and sound I'm, like he sound like he asked you out on a date no but like <laughs> that's what i'm saying is like he's in the reddit i like reddit consider that a blessing because you could have been stuck at the academy for four years uh, yeah <laughs> dude i don't know i, I can you I, imagine I I got to live a fraternity life. I had a great time in college. Oh yeah, absolutely. Everything was great. But what I'm saying, the parallel is, is like, I didn't even know yeah. what I was doing. I just put my head down and worked. Just put your head and did the work. Yeah. You and do the work, somebody else, follow these opportunities. I kind of literally fell into a scholarship. Not like Will, it was a little more defined, but like, it, yeah. it was. My I don't think was, Will fell into a scholarship. No, no, no. I'm just saying I fell into a scholarship. <laughs> okay. Will was a little more defined. You know? I think that's called blood, sweat, and tears yeah, exactly. and broken <laughs> bones. And- <laughs> yeah, right. And 
Well, I mean, it goes right. back to that whole thing, man. It's put in the work and, and good things will happen. Don't worry about the outcome. Don't worry about getting to right, it. Exactly. Because it may I not think, happen. I think uh, if, if there's any story to be whatever gained or lesson to be gained from my story. And again, for me, it, it was accidental <laughs> in a way, or it just yeah. it fell in line. But it's, I think sometimes you can get too focused on, you need goals and you need sure. to set goals, but sometimes you can be so transfixed on those goals and so worried about, the future yeah. and maybe worried about the past, what you did fucking yesterday or a mistake you made or anything. Um, whereas your real focus needs to be just on making incremental steps daily and yeah, don't get fucking huge. lost on, uh, you know, don't get lost on shit. You can't control, control the things you can control, which is what the fuck's in front of you. Like right now, 